Hello, I am Bentham, and welcome back to Factorio Town. So in the previous episode, we were over in West Point sorting out the uh, the, the southwest wall. But uh, we start today over in the eastern town of Newton, uh, where we need to deal with some biter bases that have been uh, advancing forward. We've had a lot of attacks recently against Newton and Frackham, and I've decided to uh, start the episode by just clearing them away so that we don't get bothered by them while we're working on anything else, because uh, if we leave them much longer, they'll set up a, a base like two meters away from Newton again and just attack like every five seconds or whatever. And you can see, even as I'm making my way to the, the first battle, the um, the copper deposit out there is under attack by uh, one of the nearby bases. At some point, we should set up a, a copper town on there. We're getting towards that now, what with, um, uh, with Fortune starting to run out of its copper supply, we may soon start uh, building a town on there. Uh, but for the moment, it seems like there's enough for supply. I mean, we have i don't think we've got miners set up on all of the, the copper deposit yet in Forge, and so I see we're getting close. There's plenty more yet, I should think. Um, though I do need to check over in Redport. I was thinking earlier, I haven't been to Redport in a very long time. I've just sort of forgotten about it, because it's, it's not been attacked. So I've, there's been... Uh, and the, the production's gone fine, so um, we need to see how things are going there. The, uh, the copper situation might not be uh, too great. But anyway, we start dealing with this one. This one's extremely close to Frackham um, and has caused quite a bit of trouble for its defences in the uh, in its uh, southeast corner. So we'll start advancing in with this one and then we'll move on to all the other ones around the area. So while we're doing that, I will talk about uh, 0.13. It's, uh, it's not out yet, but it is definitely going to be very soon now. And uh, there's been some more news since the, the last episode of Towns I did. I was going to talk about it in the most recent Railworld episode, but I ended up running out of time. But uh, they have revealed the art for... Well, the, I was going to say the art for the new train, but that is backwards. The new art for the train. Um, which they showed off... Uh, well, it was, uh, it was the Factorio Friday Facts before last at this point. It came out uh, not that long after the most recent episode of Towns. And um, I quite like it. It's very cool. Um, like, comparing it with the old one, uh, it, it makes the old one look terrible, really. Um, the old train model, I mean, you, you probably know it pretty well, it's it's just sort of it's just sort of a big grey block, really, with some, some red trim and a, a little bit in the way of markings and, and sort of general details on the outside. Uh, but this new one is very, very cool. It's, um, it's, it's brighter and it's, uh, it's got just more stuff to it. There's so many more bits on it, uh, which I think is really cool. Like, it shows just how sort of featureless the old one is. This is this one is just... it's covered in, in pipes and, and vents and valves, and it looks really cobbled together, which is really cool. It's sort of... Um, it's it's sort of a more sort of factorian sort of train, really. It, it's, it's like... I, I think the, the art style has sort of changed over time, because this was... Um, this was, like, the, I think the old train was made to be a train on a, a fairly permanent basis. I don't think when they set it up they were intending to replace it. Because uh, early on in, in Factorio's history, a lot of the art that they made was just sort of placeholders to properly represent something, and then was later uh, replaced. So, like, the old radars, I think, were always placeholders, and they brought in the new ones. But I think the old train art may have been intended to be the train art, but uh, they've decided to update it to bring it more in line with the with the, the newer Factorio style, which is to have things look like they're just bolted together by a madman alone on a planet who needs a, a train sort of thing. Hopping by the uh, the copper deposit there to uh, to resupply the turrets. Hopefully they shouldn't have much work to do because we'll, um, we'll be dealing with the base around them, but uh, they were starting to suffer a little bit, get very damaged and so on. Also, over here we come across a base in like under construction, which is something I, I very rarely actually have a chance to see. I've sort of seen different stages of it, but I've never seen it sort of progress, usually because when I come across uh, a group of biters all clustered around in one area starting to build a base, I will immediately run over and kill them. But while I was setting up the, uh, the turrets so that I could fall back to them, uh, a base appeared, because when I arrived there was only the, the cluster of biters and I think a single worm. And then I, I zoomed in on where I was, uh, set up some turrets, zoomed out again, and a base had appeared. Um, so I'm a bit annoyed with myself, really, for zooming in and, and missing seeing that happen, because I want to see if there's, like, an animation for it, because I, I don't know. I've never actually seen a base get built. Um, I, I think it just appears. It might even be set to appear only when you're not looking or something like that. But uh, it would have been nice to see just, like, to zoom out and, and be able to see it happen. Uh, whether it just pops into existence or whether it grows out of the ground or whatever, who knows? Uh, but yes, yeah, so the train art, it is, uh, yeah, um, the coolest thing about it uh, for me is the 
there's this bit on the front which is just this mass of pipes and and just bits and unnameable stuff that you have no idea what it does and it just looks like it's been sort of bolted on the side it sort of sticks out from the rest of it uh, and I think that's really cool it's, it's very sort of there's more I guess like character to it. It, it, it like it's telling you something about its creator uh, more than the old train did um, that it's just been all mashed together and yeah and and there's some interesting thing about it as well is uh, the wheels are now uh, properly visible. Something I never really noticed about the old trains is that you can't really see their wheels. They are just sort of a block that, and they just sort of glide along uh, the tracks and part of the reason for that is that like if they did have wheels it would show you how like, it, it wouldn't look right because um, they wouldn't stick to the tracks properly. Uh, with this new train uh, the wheels are visible and they actually move independently of the train, not as in like wandering off, but they, they rotate so um, they properly follow the tracks and sort of like rotate left and right uh, to make sure that that makes sense like they do in real trains nowadays. So that's quite cool, a little bit of, uh, of extra uh, detail to it. And we've seen it in action, there's a short gif of it, uh, of it moving around. We don't get to see it do a full rotation though, annoyingly, so we don't know what one side of it looks like yet, um, because like we've sort of seen a bit of the top of it from looking at it. It looks like the sides are different. I like it being asymmetrical and just sort of messy and, and, uh, and mashed together. Uh, so we, we've not seen it fully rotate, which is annoying because the reason that we have this new art is because they've just overhauled um, the, the train lengths, and they've made it so that they are the same length horizontally as vertically. Uh, and one of the ways they've done that is with having small amounts of stretching in the um, in the the model. So I wanted to see like how much that was, but we only see it do like a like a 45 degrees before um, it loops back again. So um, it, it's hard to see the sort of full effect yet. But it did like looking at it. It, it seemed like it, it. I could sort of tell it was stretching, but then that might be because I was looking for it. And if you weren't, maybe you you'd never notice it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, in, uh, in like, I don't know, like, a year's time or a few months or whatever, um, there'll be people posting in, like, the forums saying, is it me or does the train stretch? And, and stuff like that. That'd be, that, that'd be good proof that it, it's, it's sort of worked. Like, you have to be paying a lot of, ten a lot of attention to it to realise it's stretching. But yeah, we'll get a better look at that once the update comes out. And of course, when I do my, uh, my overview video, I'll, I'll have plenty of fun just, like, spinning in a circle in one of those and seeing... Uh, exactly what it looks like. But yeah, I, I love the new model. It's a lot more messy and and, and interesting and colourful and, and detailed and uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing it uh, running along the tracks here. What I'm not looking forward to is seeing the absolute mess uh, that uh, my, uh, my rail networks will be uh, subjected to when all the trains just change length by that tiny amount, like the um, the, I think the it, it seems like the the vertical stations are going to suffer a lot more. I think they may be just completely ruined and need uh, some some major redesigns. Because either way, like the, the the way it works at the moment, they're so different that either they're both going to be ruined a bit, or one of them's going to be ruined a lot, and the other one's going to be mostly okay. And the longer your trains are, the more of a mess it's going to be for your loading areas. Like the mega train loading area in Rail World, that is screwed. I'm going to have to redo that whole thing. Uh, by a, a pretty serious am amount, I think, because, like, just standardizing it so that, like, a train is is a a, a number of blocks long, specifically, is going to mess it up, because at the moment it's, like, six and a half or whatever, and so everything gets really weird. So, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. But anyway, back to what we're doing. We've finished off dealing with the biters for today, and we've gone over to Southbridge, and it, it doesn't look good, and I knew it wouldn't look good. For a long time now, I've been seeing the, the attack reports and the occasional explosion reports coming in from there, and I've just sort of ignored it. I've been like, oh, it seems to be fine. Um, it, it, the explosions are happening at a steady rate, I guess, so uh, like it wasn't accelerating to a point where they could suddenly take out the base, but it was clearly approaching that sort of point. A very large number of turrets were missing from one corner, and it was getting to the point where like biters would just have free reign uh, against the wall there. Uh, but I've come along now and i fixed it all and i put in more turrets than there ever were uh, before to help with the defences. So that should all be fine. Um, hopefully, like, sooner rather than later we'll be dealing with the actual bases responsible for all this damage. So far we've been very much ignoring um, 
the the biter bases in the south uh, for various reasons. I'm sort of at the moment I'm like. I'm dealing with things specifically in the west and the east, and then I'm working south from there, but never quite reaching the actual, like, southmost point, where the biters have really managed to, to push forward a lot. And we're seeing more attacks on Flaskmere and things like that, uh, though they usually seem to just run straight past and go for, uh, go for Southbridge. So that's all fixed up, that should be okay for a while, and I'll make sure to not leave it so long between, uh, between like, maintenance visits uh, from now on, I think. But anyway, we go over to Fortin to resupply on ammo. We used up quite a lot on uh, attacking all the biters, as well as resupplying all the turrets in Newton and in Southbridge. So we just grab like another 10 stacks or whatever, uh, load them into the car, and that should be fine. Interesting enough, when I arrived at Fortin, the um, the production had stopped. The, it actually finished filling up all of the uh, the loading chests for the uh, the ammo train that goes to West Point. Uh, enough that uh, in between train visits it was actually just shutting down entirely which is a good sign that means less pollution um, and uh, less iron consumption as well and stuff like that so that those are all that's uh, it is a very good sign that things will sort of improve in terms of pollution and biter attacks uh, up in that area of course I didn't help that by taking a bunch of uh, ammo when I got there but that should keep me supplied for a decent while anyway uh, but we've gone over to Flaskmere to get a bit of work done there uh, because in the previous episode, I was asking people where they think I should have the processing unit production. Um, there were three options. It was have it in Flaskmere, so that it doesn't run out of stuff to do once the science completes, which isn't that far off now. All we've got now is uh, the follower robot count research uh, chain, which is going to take us a while. There's a lot of steps to it. And um, the final rocket silo research. Um, of course, when 0.13 comes along, there'll undoubtedly be random extra little bits of science to be done uh, to research some of the new uh, the new items that will be uh, introduced. But uh, the Flaskmere's days are, are not that far um, from ending at this point. So yeah, the options were Flaskmere, or I think put it in West Point, so it was right by the um, uh, the uh, power suit production that would be using it. And then the other option was have uh, a separate town, which would maybe also do modules depending on uh, how things turned out. But it seemed like people were in favour of having it set up in Flaskmere. So I've decided that's where we're going to have our processing unit production, which is nice. So we won't end up with uh, with Flaskmere just sort of dying and running out of stuff to do in uh, the near future. And it does make sense if a town can see that its industry is starting to fail. Um, and that soon, it, like pretty soon it's going to not be able to... Um, like make any money or make a living or whatever off uh, whatever current industry it's doing, it's probably going to try and, and diversify and do something else. In fact, you sometimes find that um, that uh, like uh, something that we I, I think we sometimes have in the UK is that the government will uh, specifically like uh, set up new um, industries in in failing towns. So if there's a town that were like it's based on iron mining or whatever and iron mining is failing, they'll put some sort of administrative thing in there. Like they'll they'll set up some sort of branch of uh of uh, I, I don't know how what to call it, but basically they'll they'll have some sort of administrative uh government related uh thing be set up in that area to revitalize it and and, and maintain uh, jobs and stuff there. So it's sort of like I'm doing that sort of thing. I'm seeing that Flaskmere is gonna run out of, like, the, the Flaskmere's industry is gonna end soon, and so I'm bringing in some some new stuff. Like, the processing unit production can be in, in pretty much any place, because um, it uses entirely uh, intermediate products. Um, it uses uh, circuits, advanced circuits, and um, sulfuric acid, so they're all just going to be brought in, like, from other places, wherever I set them up. I don't want to, like, expand uh, Redport or, or Chipton or anything like that to, to have processing units, because I'm not setting things up that way. So I'm basically, like, saying, here's this bit of production that can go anywhere, I'm going to put it in this place, because it's going to run out of uh, stuff to do soon. So if it wasn't for the fact that there aren't actually any people in, uh, in these towns, it would make a, a whole lot of sense to set this up here. So I'm starting to set up my column here, um, it's pretty much the standard design I always use, um, though usually I only have it single sided, I'm going for double sided this time because uh, um, usually what I do is I have the, the main bus thing and then I want everything to be scalable and I want I don't want things to be too bulky like in, in terms of width because um, it just makes the, um, the main bus unnecessarily long. But this time around, uh, rather than having sort of an infinite 
like distance I can stretch this over. Um, it is sort of limited a bit more. I, I can always expand it to make more room for it, but if I if I can avoid it, I'd rather um, have it stay within the, the space that um, I currently have. So um, I'm making it double-sided, and hopefully that should be fine. I am using less in the way of belts than I usually would. Usually I would have two belts for a one-sided thing. I'm going to have three belts for two-sided. That should be okay, because the central belt will just have... Um, advanced circuits. In fact, it might even just have advanced circuits on one side. You need so many more normal circuits than advanced circuits that uh, I think that actually works out better in terms of uh, of, uh, of the ratios. Uh, but yeah, that's not too important at the moment. We're just getting the basic structure in place. We'll start getting the materials delivered in, and uh, we'll see how it works, and we'll like mess about with it until it, uh, until it lines up nicely. Though I imagine we'll probably have um, uh, more materials than we need uh, at the end of the day, well, because, like, the 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 towns in, in this series don't make things particularly fast, and that was never the goal. The main goal is to just make the thing, and then if we need more of it, we'll see about setting up more production of it. So as long as it is making some processing units, that should be fine. But anyway, um, the, like, the matter of bringing the circuits and advanced circuits over is pretty easy. I can just get some trains to do that. In fact, I can probably just, like, have trains that are already running just have one extra stop. And that would be uh, enough to get some sort of production going, uh, like in the town. Um, but the difficult bit is the sulfuric acid, and this was one of the reasons that people were saying not to have the uh, the processing unit production in uh, in Flaskmere, because uh, they were saying, well, either we, you'd have to pipe over the sulfuric acid, or you would have to, um, like, get a mod with uh, with fuel wagons or whatever. But what I could just do is uh, send over the the sulfur. And then the components you need to turn sulfur and sulfuric acid, which I think might just be iron. It's either iron or iron and copper. Um, and and I think oh, also water is involved, which funnily enough ends up being the, the most awkward bit. Usually, water is the easiest thing because it's an infinite resource. You just put a pump in somewhere and you're good. But um, I noticed after like starting work on this and getting the the sulfur delivered over to um, to Flaskmere that actually. There's no nearby water, and like the, the nearest water that we do have is quite close to some biters, so they may attack the pumps, though I would be quite surprised by that, because you don't need any power for pumps. I can literally just build a pump there, and some pipes, and pipe it over, and there'll be no pollution generation uh, involved in it, so I, I don't think the biters will attack it, but you can never be quite sure. I mean, if they do, we'll know about it, and we can fix it again. If we really, like, are having trouble with it for whatever reason, we can just get it piped in from the north instead. It'll have to travel a little bit further, but that's not a huge problem. And it does open up the possibility of, uh, in future, if, uh, if uh, uh, fluid wagons do get implemented, of uh, having water transported to Flaskmere, which will be interesting. That'll be quite cool to see. Just have one of the random towns that's particularly near to water um, deliver it in. In fact, I guess the nearest one to water would be... Um would be Colbury, uh, thinking about it. Um, that is the nearest one, I think, so um, it'd mean that Colbury actually... Well, Colbury has an export in terms of power, I guess, but it will also have uh, a physical export, which would be quite nice. And in fact, I could uh, I could have the one train uh, going between uh, Colbury, Southbridge, and, uh, and Frankham, and that'd make quite a bit of sense. It's all one continuous line. But anyway, we've got the uh, the situation set up in uh, Fracken, we've got the sulfur being siphoned out of the uh, the chemical plant and sent over to be loaded onto the train. I've sort of accidentally broken the battery production for a while because I used fast inserters which had priority over long armed inserters because they're quicker. Uh, but I switched it so that the fast inserters uh, were delivering the sulfur into the sulfuric acid for the battery production. So that should fix it and even if it doesn't, um, we'll not be like uh, using that sulfur uh, chemical plant at full capacity anyway. Because we're not going to be del delivering uh, quite that much sulfur, I think, to um, to flask me. Though I don't really know how much sulfur you need per um, per processing unit. So we'll see how it works out. It's a case of just um, messing about until you get a good idea of it. I think in like real world, I still only have like two uh, sulfur like sulfur uh, chemical plants, so that should be fine. Uh, but yes, we start setting up the the chemical plant on this end to make the uh, uh, the sulfuric acid, so we'll just get um, the sulfur, and then just uh, we we have iron on site, so that's fine. And and I remember now it doesn't need any 
any copper, it's only the uh, the batteries that need copper, so that's easier. There's plenty of iron left. Um, it'll probably last beyond the signs completing, so that will uh, allow us to. It, it sort of it makes it make a bit of sense as well to have the uh, uh, the process unit production set up specifically here. Uh, so yeah, next episode we'll continue with that. We'll start getting it set up, and then once that's set up, we can start working on power suits, and we can probably like basically change entirely how we combat biters because we'll be doing all the technology at once, pretty much. Uh, so that's going to be cool. That's going to make things a lot easier in terms of dealing with them. But that's all we have time for today. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.